Hi, it's Teresa from Bike TV, and we're here with George Hincappy, superstar cyclist. He's like ridden the Tour de France 20 times, <laughs> up Mount Everest, you know, whatever. But we're very happy to have him here. And first of all, I just have to say it's ah! freezing. <laughs> and I want to know what you do to. Uh, to prepare for like a cold ride, even though this is probably not a cold ride for you. I actually was, this morning it was really cold. It's, it's warmed up a bit now, but I uh, just put a lot of layers on, uh, stuff that breathes. Um, but there's really not much you can do about your, you can wear warm gloves and warm shoe covers, but you still get your hands and feet still get cold. So you just kind yeah. of suffer through it. Because I'm trying to figure out a way I can like wear my sleeping bag <laughs> while I'm riding. Definitely can't do that. Just wear thermal stuff, you know, thicker stuff that breathes that you don't, get really wet in that you yeah. don't sweat a lot in. Okay. Um, and that, and that helps. But normally just, you're gonna be cold the first half an hour and just try to warm up and uh, get the blood flowing. Okay, all right. Sleeping bag, I can't do No, right. definitely not. Okay. Um, you went to Farmingdale High School, yep. right? Uh, and that's sort of in the suburbs. Yeah. And when I was growing up in the suburbs upstate, I was like, the only loser quote who was like riding her bike to some soccer practice and uh -huh. stuff so there was like no way I knew about cycling how did you well, find I mean, it my, my father raced for a long time never professionally but it was more of a family sport for us and that was the same way I would ride my bike to, to class sometimes and I was the only cyclist in my school and uh, I, I ended up getting a lot the, the, the later, latter years of my high school years I got a lot of support from my friends and from the from the high school and I actually got a varsity letter for cycling named you did? they made a letter for me which is pretty cool um, but I got to get a lot of support in high school and I got into it because of my father and my family it was it was it was a, definitely a family sport for us so how how did that happen is he from this country or is no he's from Colombia and Colombia's oh, they're a, huge. yeah a huge cycling, cycling community and uh, he just brought it over here and in New York there's a ton of cyclists there's a ton of races every weekend you can race uh, you can race on the weekdays in Casino Velodrome so I had a lot of competition growing up and I think it's really paved my career. Wow so how old would you say that you started like seriously? <coughs> I started racing when I was about 10 years old so 20 years ago. Oh my god wow. I noticed that you're tall how tall are you? 6'3". Six, 6'3 three. Six, three, and I've been to the Tour de France a couple of times and seen these guys and like who Robbie McEwen is like three feet two and, and there, there are a lot of like little guys but then yeah. there's you and Ludo who's just like giant. Um, Jan Ulrich is known for being big. Yeah. Uh, I just think it's interesting that there are all these different body types in yeah. cycling. Well, that's the thing with cycling. It's really you can you can have any kind of body type. The, the main, the important thing is the power to weight ratio. You know, if you're a bigger guy, you just need to have more power, and uh, the small smaller guys can have less power and still go up the, the up the hills really fast. But really, any any body type can do cycling. It just uh, depends on what your power to weight ratio is. If you're for recreational purposes, uh, it's it's just a great way to to be healthy and to get get out there and do exercise and uh, to see these beautiful things around you. Cool. Um, now you've ridden Paris Roubaix. Paris is a fancy way of saying Paris, um, and it seems like every year it's just like complete mud, yeah. right? Um, and then my boyfriend over here like will make me wash my bike if I've got like two specks of mud on it. I yeah. hate it. I don't see how you would like continue to ride if you had to maintain your bike all the time. <laughs> well, it's for for it's pretty simple, you know, for us. Occasionally we just hose it down with, uh, you know, a hose and put some chain lube on there. And uh, That's all you have to do? That's much. all you have to do, boyfriend? It's just hose it down and put some chain lube That's on? That's all I do. Look at my bike. It's money. And, you know, <laughs> occasionally bring it into the bike shop and get it overhauled. But, uh, it's you know, maintenance is pretty easy. Okay. So, do you think it's bad that I don't know how to change a flat? That's probably pretty bad, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's not that hard. Hi, I'm Poppy 
Camille for Bike TV Sports. And I'm the notorious GAZ. We are here today at Buckingham Manor for the first annual Eddie Merrick's Bicycle Bike Off uh, to benefit Recycle a Bicycle. You can hear the players behind me and they are excited. And yeah. so are we. Oh. Here are the teams playing today. The international team, team number three, has riders from both Recycle a Bicycle and the Weekday Cyclist. And from the U.S. National Championship over the years. They call it live wrong. The players are now entering the field. There are three requirements for the players. One, they must be wearing a bicycle hat. That is crucial. Two, they need to sign in on the sign-in sheet. Sign their name, regular stuff. And three, they need to shake hands with the notorious GAZ. That's just for fun. Steve McMaster from Bike TV from Liverpool, England. I'm ready for this. I'm ready. Teresa Sullivan for Bike TV from Syracuse, New York. Good luck. Please sign. Stephen O'Neill for Cycle Disciple. Currently residing in Brooklyn. He's from Delaware. Best of luck to you. Rob Rowan for the Cycle Disciple, born in Madison, New Jersey. Naomi Rennick for Time's Up, from New York, New York. Hello, hello, Hannah Borgeson for Time's Up, from Poughkeepsie, New York. Hello, hello. Trudy Hunter for the international team, the coordinator for the weekday cyclists from Manhattan. And Rich Pinto for the international team. Representing your cycle bicycle from Cranford, New Jersey. And now we are set to begin. The incredible GAZ and I are just here for the action. But the feel is unbelievable. Let's check out the action on the board. Okay, Mr. White. People the world over love to play the Eddie Merckx board game. It has relatively simple rules, but it does involve a lot of strategy. Each team has three riders. The object of the game is to win as much prize money during the three laps of the board as you can. Obviously it pays to cross first, but you can still win the overall title by placing your riders frequently in the top money positions. Each team gets breakaway cards for each lap, which entitles them to roll twice. Played correctly, they can allow you to break from the peloton of riders. He's got no legs today. Another tactic you may hear is someone yelling out, Wheel. Wheel. Which means a rider directly behind another has elected to forego their roll of the die and to draft into a position directly behind. These guys are on drugs. We're all rolling right next to him. See? He can't even stand up. Yeah, yeah. Don't so dope that again. Sorry. Wheel. Nice try, Trudy. Now it's the orange. Wheel. Green, three, four, five, six. We're going to go here. Yeah. We're going to break away now. Oh, break away. Break away. Come on, seven. Oh, it's just higher than two. Is what does not? breakaway mean again? They get to get roll twice and nobody can draft. Okay. We might have squandered it. Oh, oh boy. Well, yeah. frankly, they're right. Four choked. <laughs> we, needed some, we needed to get some distance between One of those, uh, Trace. Um, Quattro, our team and the Peloton. The Spanish rider. And frankly, we found oh, no. Halfway through the first lap, there is a major buildup in the mountains. It's a big bunch. So we might as well take our own gun. Yeah. Yeah. We're not last. All right. So, you guys so I wonder who's in the lead. By TV! Orange guy? Yes. Oh, well, nice. Five. Uh, Correct. You guys are going lazy. Uh, breaking away. We're breaking away, everybody. <laughs> breaking ready. away. Breaking away. Oh! oh, oh. One, two, three. First four. place. Blue, blue. Okay, Trudy. Oh, sure. Congratulations, <laughs> Rich. It's you guys. Okay, let's, let's go for like a four. Oh, we got two thousand bucks. We're not gonna get third though. <laughs> We've come to the end of the placings for the first round, and here are the results. In first place, the international team for five thousand dollars. In second place, Bike TV. Third place, Cycle Disciple. And in fourth place, the international team with a second showing for another one thousand. They've won six thousand so far. It might be hard to beat.
What do you think? Unbelievable GAZ. That's absolutely smashing, baby. They have uh, six thousand dollars. I had never, I had never dreamed that we would have such success on our first tour. Ah, <laughs> 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 oh, take us out, y'all. So we lost all our breaking opportunities because our two slacker guys are way in the back. <laughs> I they sucked in training camp. Yeah, I think we need our theme music. We need some inspiration. Oh. Yeah! Oh! Right. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Tyler Hamilton, Bryce, you're doing it. What are they saying to each no, other, those two guys at the back? Cool. We should have doped up before we went on this race. That's all I can do, too. <laughs> That's what they're saying. <laughs> okay, wait. Is that? We need one, two, three, four to get our cards. Come on. We're here now with Rob Rowan. He's playing today, but he's taken the time out to come talk to us about Eddie yeah. Merckx and his incredible yeah, career. Rob? Uh, the reason that Eddie Merckx is often seen as the most incredibly successful cyclist of all time is for a couple of very practical reasons. He's won, during his career, the Giro d'Italia five times. He won the Tour de France five times also. He was also world champion and held three world records during that time. He still holds the hour world record. That's the record for how far you can ride in one hour at altitude. He also continues to be the only man to ever wear the yellow jersey in the Tour de France from the first to the last stage. And he is only one of two riders who ever won in one season the Giro d'Italia, the Tour de France, and the World Championship. He is the only rider to ever win in the 1971 Tour de France the yellow polka dot and green jerseys all in one season. That's why no one will ever be as great as Eddie Merckx. We're only on lap two, but already all the fun has gone out of this dead serious. <laughs> <laughs> Lance Harris is the red caboose. Are you at the lantern? Yeah, it's actually a over. very respected position. It's we, hard to be the lantern. <laughs> <laughs> this is a very difficult <laughs> point for the bright TV <laughs> and the Time's Up team. <laughs> their two people are about to be labbed. When that happens, they'll lose one of their breakaway cards. That could win or lose the game for them. Oh, oh, sure. oh for a sure. second, Green looked oh, wait, like they had some they skill. Wall, He's right? such a dick. Oh, oh, oh. there's a so six. <laughs> <laughs> there's a six. <laughs> there you go. Oh, you got second. Clarence. More money? Mike TV. More money. Mike TV, how you doing? Six grand, that's how we're doing. So, the presumed standings in the second round are exactly the same as the first round. International team came in first and presumably fourth. Mike TV came in second and Cycle Disciple in third. So the international team so far has 11,000, which will soon be 12. Mike TV has 6,000 and Cycle Disciple has 4,000. At the end of the second round, it's going to be really hard for any other team to make up as much money. However, the pack is wide open. Who knows what could happen? There still could be some surprises. Certain someone on the Lantern Rouge team <laughs> rolled a one and then rolled again. No one was paying attention. I did notice it, though. That is, that is doping. I think that's akin to doping. But as of now, there is no definitive evidence that we have been doping. We have to test you. Please roll in this cup. You know. <laughs> wow. Doping. 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 EPO. Go back to one. <laughs> back. Back on TV right now. Sorry, yeah, everyone yelled. Sorry. Yeah, really. Yeah, so I won't be able to make it back till later. He's on TV. He's on TV. He's on TV. Can't believe it. Hi kids, remember me? The GAZ. My money's on Team Dynamite. Okay, we're gonna go the long way. Sixer! Sixer! I played this game on a Time's Up trip to Toronto. And it was really fun. So then I looked on it. Hmm? Looked for it on eBay for two right. years, and I finally found it. Teresa. Um, uh oh. That was a nice shot. Thank you. I didn't try. Four. No. Sometimes it's the shots are very Oh, he's dead. <laughs> he put up a valiant fight. It's really hard to stay in last place for so long. He had no support out there. He had this guy drafting off of him. He couldn't even get How water. How rude is that? He's losing, and the winner is drafting. It's <laughs> tough. <laughs> tough out there. We've got Three. stiff competition. Teresa International is. Uh, 
the pretty, pretty, pretty right, tough. So they were out drinking red four. wine last night. Give an interview. Ah, that's so, what we need. Sorry, my partner's Three calling six. me. Double sixes, Five. buddy. Five and a half. Oh. <laughs> Let's just do it. He's right on us. Okay, okay, we're gonna do it. Break in away. Uh, we're doing it. Ryder from the Internacional Amarillo team needs a four to get one. across the line. Unlucky. Oh no. See what we do. Unit. Four! <laughs> We're here with the winners of the first annual Eddie Merrick's Bicycle Bike Off. The international team represented by Recycle Bicycle and, and the Weekday Cyclist. And the unbelievable GAZ is here to present the $25 check. Won by an astronomical margin, twenty nine thousand. Your nearest competitors were at sixteen thousand. What wow. was your strategy? Uh, we worked out quite a bit, mm -hmm. and uh, I really feel that Rich won for the team. Why is that? Uh, because um, I think that he um, roll of the die was uh, he had some magic in it. Six and he just ran away with it. Well, that's great. Um, Rich, how do you feel? I mean, not only did you win for Recycle a Bicycle, you won for Recycle a Bicycle. Right. Well, first of all, I'd, I'd like to thank Trudy for her kind words. I, you know, it means a lot. We, we worked hard together and we prepped, and uh, so thank you. But I think what it really came down to is just straight up aggressiveness. We attacked when we needed to, and uh, it paid off. We, we, we gambled, but we weren't looking for second place. That's not how we play the game. I think it shows. Thank you both very much for your time. Thank you very much. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. We're here with the Cycle Disciples, who won a very admirable second place. How do you guys feel you did, and what would you do differently next time? Um, well, we're pretty pleased. There was a point in the middle there where we were kind of disappointed with uh, a breakaway effort, but in the end, I think we're pretty satisfied with second place. I don't agree. I, mean, I think second place sucks, and um, it's hard to shoot out of second place for next year, but we'll be back. We're going to get a little of the aggro, and uh, we're going to kick some serious tookie next year. So We're here with a, a very um, disconsolate, uh, distraught, if you will, third place team for Bike TV. I'm not sure we're actually... I'm not sure we're really Suck gonna get much, much, much Suck from them, gun. but but perhaps Steve McMaster, you can you can fill us in on on where what what <laughs> yeah a lot a lot of doping going on here. I don't I'm not saying anything, but a lot of I heard there's a lot of a lot of doping going on here. But I found, no, no comment. You guys got fourth uh, four thousand dollars in the uh, in fifth place in in four out of four. <laughs> <laughs> It's only four teams. <laughs> in, in a fifth place finish in the third round, oh. you're four thousand dollars. How how do you guys feel? Well, we're really happy to have the opportunity to participate in the Eddie Merckx game. It was a lifetime experience for us, and we were just happy to have had the opportunity. We gave it our best shot, and uh, we're in it for the joy of the game. Thank yeah. you very much. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you guys. And we were able to pull the winning team in. <laughs> for quite a period of time with them drafting on us. <laughs> I know. That would have made me extremely bitter, but you guys held up really well, and I'm very impressed. Thank you. From everyone here at Bike TV Sports, see you next time. First off, I wanted to just say congratulations on the birth of your daughter. Thank you. And uh, I was really glad to hear about that. It's always nice, and I know it's difficult when you're a professional athlete to handle that stuff. Yeah. Um, one of my questions is for you about um, her and her growth. Have you thought about at all what kind of advice you would give her if she wanted to, 14 years from now, start racing, particularly if you all race her here in the United States and <laughs> as she enters the women's peloton here? Yeah, I, for now I just want to let her do whatever she wants. and. Um, you know, if she wants to, if she wants to ride her bike, then I definitely will give her all the support in the world. But I'm not going to force her to ride her bike, and I just, I hope that that uh, one day we can go out there and ride our bikes together for fun. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
uh, changing gears a little bit, you've been through a couple of changes on your team. You were part of Motorola, now you're part of US Postal, next year you're going to be Discovery. Mm -hmm. um, has anything substantial changed during that time, um, or is it basically most of the <coughs> riders and coaches that are most important to you? Uh, we've had some, yeah, some real substantial changes. You know, back in Motorola, that was my first year of racing, and we were, we were actually a pretty good team. Um, in the European circuit at that time, but when I went to the Postal Service, it was a new a, a new team, new staff, some of the some of the same riders, but a lot of a lot of new staff, and uh, we were we were basically the bad news bears, you know, small budget team. We, were, we had to beg to get into the Tour de France. Uh, in '97, we we got into the Tour, and just to get any result, any top 20 finish in the stage was a huge deal, and. Uh, you know, that's changed obviously in, in the last uh, six years. You know, we've been winning the Tour de France and we're the, one of the best teams in the world and big budget team and lots of people, lots of money around the team. And uh, it's almost a big corporation now. So this, it's gone through some, some, some big changes and I've been there from day one. So it's been pretty interesting for me to see it change. Yeah. Um, one other thing that's going to change for you all next season, maybe, is the Pro Tour. Yep. Um, do you think that this will give you um, more support? Does this sort of make you a little more confident about taking on some of the, some of the classics? Yeah, we have, we have actually have some great classic guys coming in. Roger Hammond and Left Voice. Uh, Max Van Heeslick's been riding amazing. Obviously, that come off. And, um, just it's going to make me more motivated just to try to keep my spot as a leader on the team because we have some some hitters there on our squad and I need to really be in great shape if I have if I want those guys to work for me. Yeah, this is some great sprinters for sure. Yeah. Um, of the things that I, I believe are probably you see as the sort of pinnacle of your career, what's been your favorite win? Is it US Pro, Get Well Welcome? Probably Get Well Welcome, uh, just because it was a classic and I was the only American ever to do it. Yeah. Yeah. So. You now spent uh, ten years in the pro, in the uh, pro peloton year. Eleven seasons. Oh, so yeah. Eleven seasons. Okay. Um, do you have a sense of how much longer this can go on for? Because you had a really long career. Um, and do you have any plans for what you'll do after um, cycling, uh, professional cycling, ends for you? Um, well, we started a clothing company that um, we're, I'm hoping grows, and we, we uh, do a lot of custom apparel for for cycling teams, local clubs, and teams across the country. And we're just trying to get into the retail market and different stores. So I'm hoping that I can do a lot of work with that. Um, but I think I got another three to five years left in me, and I'm 31 years old now. So if I can make it till I'm 35, and you know, still have a good career and be happy, then I think that I, I would be happy with the way my career went. Yeah. Okay. Great. This is the official auto free kitty and he was found by an anonymous hero around the Brooklyn Navy Yards during the ride and when he got to the festival he was taken to the transportation alternatives table where in addition to reading about all kinds of city cyclist issues well he was given to me and um, now I'm stuck with or we're stuck with each other um, it's too late now and then another Another man came over, wished he could have taken him, but loved cats so much that he donated $20 to the care of, of this cat. That man's name was Frank, so I think I'm naming him Frank. So wherever you are, Frank, thanks for the money for the cat. Okay. And um, this will be, Manhattan will be the third borough that the cat has traveled in. be the first ferry ride of this cat's short life.
So how's Frank doing? Frank, say something. Do, does Frank remember his ordeal in the, the four boroughs that day? Is he, I'm afraid he that ever? he's become rather a shadow of his former self. He just hides up in the loft and he races all around the apartment. He uh, creates his own poetry and artwork and he does his own private philosophizing. Okay, and this is one of um, Frank and I's favorite poems adapted just for his needs. It's called The End of the Raven by Edgar Allan Poe's Cat. Still the raven never fluttered, standing stock still as he uttered, in a voice that shrieked and sputtered, his two cents worth nevermore. What hangs over us each night? The bicycle over my head. And, and, if, the, and if the bicycle storage rack should seem to fail, then shall James Langergaard quoth no nevermore. There was this um, kooky old guy who was into bicycling and cats, not unlike myself, but he um, was a little less outgoing, and he showed up, he had an apartment, I suppose, even smaller than mine, and was simply unable to care for cats altogether, but his love for cats and uh, cats of the world was just overwhelming, so on the spot he donated $20 to the care of Frank, and so press for a name on the spot, I just named this guy. Frank, after the man who donated money to his care, um, I've spent since since spent much more than that on this guy, but I've decided that he's been worth it. <laughs>